Hi there, I am Dawn Livingstone and welcome to the Transcend and Succeed show dedicated to help inspire you to take steps to unlock the limitless potential within you and pave the way to an extraordinary life. My guests on this show will share their learning experiences along with practical tools and powerful insights empowering you to gain awareness and create positive shifts. So if you're ready to conquer your barriers and overcome your challenges and embrace your true potential, you have come to the right place. And today I'm delighted to be chatting with Mark Fox, who is an entrepreneur, scientist, a former space shuttle chief engineer and crop formation researcher who has designed and built a pocket pulse electromagnetic frequency device for people and pets called Vibe. So just check this out. Relief for PTSD, anxiety, pain, insomnia, and many other ailments. Introducing Vibe, the world's only pocket PEMF device. You place in your pocket while cooking, cleaning, relaxing, watching TV, sitting at your computer, reading, or walking. Self-contained standalone device. No drugs. No other phone or Bluetooth connections required. No monthly subscription fees. No apps to download. No Bozone. The future of medicine is in the frequencies. Come join the revolution. And welcome, Mark. Oh, thank you for having me. I really You're appreciate so it. You're welcome. It's lovely to see you. Um, can we just kick off? Can you tell us um, what caused you to come up with this idea for this device? Oh, it was about 20-something uh, years ago as uh, my dog her name was La Chien she um she was at the bottom of the stairs at the house and she started crying she, and it's in the morning before work she couldn't come up the stairs which had never happened before so of course me and my wife kind of freaked out we flipped a coin to see who was not going to work that day and uh, that was me so <laughs> took her to the vet and she um unfortunately had really bad arthritis in her spine okay. and um <clears throat> So there's a friend of mine, Dr. Oz Jackson. He's a real forward thinking veterinarian. He's like, hey, there's a there's a person that has a magical machine that's uh, up in Oregon that can reverse um, arthritis. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay. So I got ready to take her up there and unfortunately she got too sick too fast. Um, so we didn't get to do that. But, but I learned about that technology and those frequencies and stuff. And so, since that time, I've done lots and lots of research. I've went to a whole bunch of training and stuff on, on those frequencies. And <clears throat> I, I didn't believe it, right? Cause I'm a rocket scientist. I'm like, I don't believe frequencies are going to be helping with arthritis <laughs> and PTSD and, you know, cold sores, all these things. Right. So it's like, okay. But the more I looked into it, then I, I, I went to the training, I saw it in person, I saw people getting healed with it and how fast it could do things, which just seemed crazy to me. So I was really excited about it. And the thing that I learned about PEMF and this whole pulse electromagnetic field, this whole space is that if people are familiar with it all, you, I find out it's about one out of 20 people have heard of it. They're going to usually know a mat, like a mat. And so the mats are expensive and they're big. 
the machines that this lady and all the practitioners are using are they're, they're expensive machines. I mean, some of them are thirty to fifty thousand um, dollars. Oh wow! Yeah. So the ones that are used on horses and stuff are around 40, 50 K. So there, it's like, there's gotta be a way to make a consumer device that's reasonably affordable. So that was my mission that I started off doing that. I very naively had a uh, little printed circuit board. Let me see if I can grab it real fast. Uh -huh. uh, this, you know, I had a little, this, a friend of mine made, this is, it's a printed circuit board with a coil and you plug this into your phone. Sure. Well, the problem is no phone, phones don't have audio jacks anymore and so i was like all right and i didn't think at the time i didn't think it put out enough power which it actually did but uh so i i, I naively said take this thing to some engineers i had a little design i said put a bluetooth chip on there and a uh, a stereo amplifier and a battery should be easy well two years later things are catching on fire they can't figure out how to make it work um so i ended up with a uh, what I did is I took the protocols, the frequencies are all between one and a thousand Hertz. And they're basically a symphony, okay, of frequency pairs that change every one to four minutes. So when I couldn't get that to work, it dawned on me as like, I had taken these frequencies and I put it in a music synthesizer and I made MP3s like a song. So then that, that dawned on me is like, you know, what it is, is it's a Bluetooth speaker without a speaker. So I came up with this device called the Pulsar XO, and anyone old enough will recognize it. it looks like an old music cassette from the 80s. It right? does. Because that's what it's designed to be like. And this this is something you'd get in a goodie bag like at a conference, right, as a Bluetooth speaker. So this is a Bluetooth speaker. And um, what I ended up doing simply, I say that, took the speaker <laughs> out and I put a coil in there. Well, I used to have an eight foot pile of coils over here in the corner because it took that many coils to figure out how to make one that works. And the reason I went that way is I didn't have to build mold tooling and start from scratch. So that was my intent was to sell this one. I did a lot of clinical trials and stuff on it. Ugh, about half the world can't figure out how to do a Bluetooth connection. They just, it's too frustrating for them. And the, the other part was because it's a Bluetooth speaker, whenever their phone, so you're running it off your phone, but whenever you would get a phone call or people would have text with audible. So it's like if you're driving in your car and you had a Bluetooth speaker going, and you got a phone call, it's going to stop the music. Yeah. So, so it would interrupt the protocol all the time. And it just was really frustrating for people. Um, so the vibe, this one is it's on based off that same technology, same protocols, but this one's self-contained. It's not a Bluetooth speaker. It doesn't connect to anything. It doesn't have any apps. All you do is you turn it on, you go alphabetically, even to the protocol you like, you hit play and you put it in your pocket and that's and it. And if it goes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, people say, it looks like an old iPod. Yep. I did that on purpose. It does too. Doesn't it? Yeah. So for f familiarity, that little, Jumping bars kind of looks like a tricorder on Star Trek on purpose because mm -hmm. I wanted to be <laughs> familiar with people. So that that's how I ended up um, with the Vibe version of it, which I said is completely self-contained and trying to make it as easy as possible to use. So okay, um, so did you you research into the history of you know frequency therapy? Yeah, I did. Well, like I said, I initially kind of got into it with you know, the dog and these frequency recipes and stuff. But then as you mm -hmm. go back and you're thinking, okay, is this, when I get with the Facebook haters, when they tell me uh, it's voodoo, you're selling snake oil and stuff, then you start to just look at the history of it. So magnetic therapy has been around since 3000 BC, right? They were called lodestones. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Lodestones. So they're naturally occurring rocks. The theory is, and nobody knows why they're magnetized, but they're only on the surface. So if you dig down a couple inches in the dirt, they're not. So the theory is it's lightning. Lightning's hitting these rocks and magnetizing them. Mm -hmm. yep. So that that magnetic therapy has been used, like I said, for thousands and thousands of years. What was discovered in around 1900 and then confirmed in 1950s is pulse electromagnetic field. So instead of a static magnet, a pulse electromagnetic field was way more therapeutic. Um, so it's basically turning on and off, on and off and alternating. Um, so that's what it's called, PEMF. It's not 
total voodoo in that the earth has its own PEMF. So the earth is a big generator. It puts out PEMF just like this device at three different frequencies, very specifically 7.83 Hertz, 14.1 and 20.3. So when somebody goes, ah, it's kind of voodoo weird stuff. No, you live in it right now. All plants and non-living things are engulfed in it because of the earth and you can, you can measure it. I'll do this for you real fast. And think yeah, the 7.83, isn't that the Schumann resonance? It's a Schumann resonance. Schumann. I'll show you real fast. So, Because sure. I'm, I'm a nerd. I have a magnetometer on my phone. <laughs> but if you look at the X, Y, the three colors are X, Y, and Z. The white yep. is the combination of those. So you can see the earth is about 0.4 Gauss. It's going to show about 40 microtesla. So it's about 0.4 Gauss. I'll just show you real fast. And um, so it looks like that. And if I put the coils up here on the back the magnetometer is kind of on the back of your phone so if i go like that you can see what it does oh there you go okay so that's one of the ways that you prove it's working it's, uh -huh. just got this 10 minutes ago never played with it before but here's a little magnet in a tube uh -huh. right and if you put this up to it i don't know if you can see it or hear it i can i can hear and see it yeah is it spinning it's spinning around uh -huh. So that's another way you can prove that it's working. So, so th yeah, that's what it is. It's um, the frequencies are based on trial and error, right? They, they literally, the way it was discovered um, by the lady in Oregon that I was talking about was she bought a, a, a chiropractor practice and it had an old machine in the back, right? So what happened, what happened in 1934 is a thing called the Flexner Report came out. And it made it basically illegal for doctors to use electrical stimulation of any kind for medical therapy, which is stupid because everyone but the Western world uses it. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Your body's electrical, it's chemical, and it's mechanical. So why? We, so what happened with the Flexner report was if it wasn't surgery or drugs, you lost your license, and all the funding got pulled from all these universities and stuff. So all the rich guys at the time, the Carnegie and all those people. They pulled all their money. And so all of that history got lost and destroyed, right? It, it just 1934, 100 years ago, you lost it all. But she found a machine in the back of the room with big old mobs, you know, from the 40s or 50s. And it literally had like a card on it like this that says neuropathic component, 284 hertz, nervous emotional tension, 94 hertz, loss of harmony, 970 treat the blood supply 40. So nobody knows where these came from or what the research was, but she took those and started to make recipes. So think of it about that card as being thyme and oregano and salt and pepper and right. And you just take those frequencies and it says, okay, vitality or inflammation, inflammation. Okay. Inflammation in the elbow or in the medulla of the brain. So she developed about, um, several different protocols. So the ones I have are the ones that are called core protocols that have been successful in 35 years with no side effects. The leading edge practitioners, doctors and stuff using this are doing all kinds of interesting, crazy stuff with vagus nerve and your eyes. I don't touch any of that. I'm just going, cause I'm not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV. I'm just, I'm going with the core protocols that have not had any side effects that have been super you know, successful. The people out there, the doctors that are practicing, I, I think of them almost like House and and Sherlock Holmes mixed together. They're trying to do all this. Usually, people that walk in the door, they're they're broken. They've already had surgery. They're on all kinds of meds. They've sure. had acupuncture, and they can't fix it. Right. So I don't want to do that, and I can't because I'm not a doctor. But the eighty twenty rule, things like PTSD and anxiety and depression and sleep and things that are so common, I'm yeah. hoping to try to help the masses with it. And so, yeah, the, the main motivator was frustrated that this technology exists, but it's not affordable. Yeah. And that just made me angry. And the second thing was the 44 suicides a day. So some people oh. have heard of 22. So there's 22 military veterans a day, 15 first responders, five medical workers, and two active duty. So that's 44 suicides a day. And that's not counting you and me. That's counting those four categories. So there's tons, tons more. So part of my rationale was, you know, if I could stop one of those a week, even if I never make a penny, me and my wife have had this conversation a long time. It's like, I don't, if I don't even make any money, I save some people. 
or help some dogs. Right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I look at it this way. There's 20 million rescue dogs in the United States. That means 20 million dogs have been in jail. They didn't deserve it, right? Yeah. They didn't deserve it at all, but they got PTSD, <laughs> a lot of them, because they were behind a cage, right? They don't yes. know what's going on. So, uh -huh. um, so that, that was the big motivation. You kind of asked, that was a long answer, but really was to just get it to the masses affordably and trying to help people. I had, go ahead. I was going to say I had a, I don't want to cry, but um, had a lady yesterday that had, was suicidal. The highest score you could possibly get is an 80. She had a 78. Yeah. And after she used this for two weeks, she's at 19. So she, oh, wow. So she doesn't even officially have PTSD anymore because anything above anything above 31 to 33 on this test, it's the same test used by the Veterans Administration. It's called a PCL5. It's basically 20 questions, zero through four. If you answered four to all of them, you'd be an 80. And if you, what they're saying is any interve intervention, whether it's this or drugs or puppies, right, or w surfing, if it moves the needle 11 points or more, then it's clinically and st statistically significant. Okay. I can't even do that math. It was at 59 points that she moved. So that, that was the call I just had yesterday with her. So that, that's part of what keeps me going. I know that's amazing. It really is. And it's lovely when you, you hear things like that about, you know, people feeling better, um, you know, with, with your help. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Can, can I just go back? I know you touched on, um, the, the, you wanted to do something because of your dog it, and this is a people and pets device so how how do you use it on dogs and is it just dogs that you use it on or can you use it on any other animal you can use you can use it on any other animal I'm going to be careful because a podcast the other day the lady kind of got in an argument with me whether I can use it on horses or not because she goes there is no way in the world that little thing can do anything to a 2000 pound horse. So being the jerk that I am, we just kicked off, we just kicked off a horse study last night. So we're going to pick, take socks, horse socks, and put it in a sock on the horse and see okay. what the effectivity is. What I start off with it. Yeah. How do I attach that to a dog? Mm -hmm. Well, you can put Velcro on the back of it with a vest. And so I have several vests that come with Velcro on them, but what I figured out, and it looks awkward a little bit with this thing on the back of your dog. So what I came up with is these custom made bandanas for dogs. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So it's like that. And then the device, it has a little fancy, it has a, it has a special design pocket where this goes on the inside of it. Inside. Okay. Yeah. Let me see, I'll show you real fast. I like that. And it just fits in here. Then your dog doesn't have to be embarrassed while it's walking around. It doesn't look like it's getting any therapy, right? It's yeah. just got, it's just wearing the bandana. It's got so, a really cool bandana. It's a cool bandana. Yeah. So they're all custom made bandanas that uh, they're like, I don't make any money on. They're 30 bucks that a lady makes for me. So that that's how we're doing it right now with dogs. Mm -hmm. Cats, dogs too, but cats, uh, it's interesting. You just put it in their bed or keep up on them when they're sleeping and just pop it beside them that and <laughs> the other factor is it's just because we're running this antidotal experiment too with a lot of my friends if you just put it somewhere like on the arm of a couch the cat will come over and lay next to it find it yeah, yeah and that's some, that's amazing because well I, i'm an energy healer so when i i'm connecting with my clients they're all around me that they're quite happy just to be in the immediate vicinity. They just seem to gravitate towards it. Then they'll they'll just absorb what it is they need, and then up they get and off they go. They're quite happy. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, and they do. I know, I know. Pets are amazing. They can sense a lot of things that you know that that we can't, which is great. Which is great. And we have some of the other people in the community with other PMF devices, where people go, ah, it's all placebo and it can't be real. And it's like, well, when you look at a horse and the horse is limping and feels terrible and you give them the therapy and then they're running hightail across the field. That horse doesn't know what you just did to it, but now it's running, right? So there's, I got in an argument with a doctor the day before yesterday. So I had to, I, when somebody says, ah, it's all placebo. Well, it could be, but I don't think so. And then another doctor told me, you know, the best medication in the world is only 40% better in a placebo. It's like, okay, if it was a hundred percent placebo, I don't even care if somebody's suicidal and now they're not, right? P 
PTSD if they went from 78 to 19. I don't care if, and what this one doctor told me, I said, because we're getting ready to do a diabetes study here um, in a couple of days, just kick it off, mm. is a, a blood sugar study is, I said, I think it's pretty hard to have a placebo effect with blood sugar because I have had it go, I have people going for 220 blood sugar down to 100. And this doctor said, no, it is not. He goes, I have a patient that has, was on four medications, four medications and her blood sugar was still 350. We could not wow. do anything to get it down. And he goes, you know what happened? Her daughter moved out of the house and her blood sugar dropped to 100. I took her off all the drugs and it's still at 100. He goes, it's stress-induced stress diabetes. Related. I'm mm -hmm. like, is that a real thing? He goes, yes, it's a real thing. I got four other patients like that now. That So that's an interesting factor because when I talk to him, it's like, I'm going to just you know, have people prick their finger and measure whether it goes down over five yeah. weeks, right? And he goes, well, you got to have, of course, doctors going to make it too complex. You got to have all these other factors. And I'm like, dude, I don't have $10 million for this study with 17 variables. But he, that's what started the conversation. He's like, you got to take into what their lifestyle is and whether they're stressed out and you got to measure 50. I'm like, I'm just trying to get an indication because I've got the reason I'm doing it. I didn't believe that. Okay. The first time somebody told me their blood sugar dropped, I go, on one try, by the way, the first session, I go, that's impossible, Bert. Can't go from 220 to 100. And, but I've have, I have eight people now that have told me my blood sugar went down. So I don't have any statistical data. That's why we're going to go run that study. But mm -hmm. Bert, my friend, he's a pretty big, burly dude, right? But he was, his blood sugar is around 220. It dropped to 100. He was taking 80 units of insulin a day, 40 in the morning and 40 at night. Okay. He quit taking insulin completely. I go, don't, don't do that. I'm not a doctor. He goes, no, I don't need to. I, he, he gives me the leeway that if my blood sugar's okay, I don't need to, to take it. So I'm like, Bert, you had to lose a bunch of weight. And he goes, nope, a few pounds, but not a lot. And I go, you had to lose weight. And he goes, no. And then he kind of smiles. This is on a Zoom call. And he goes, well, now that my blood sugar is down, I started eating stuff I like, like donuts and stuff again. <laughs> I was like, okay, now I know why you're not losing weight. But um, right. so, yeah, so that's pretty exciting um, if it'll do that with blood sugar. So that we're gonna go try and prove it because I'm my number one goal is to not hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. So I've spent forever on the energy levels and the frequencies and trying to prove that. And two is I do not want to sell voodoo, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the, I don't want the Facebook haters coming after me and. So that's why I'm, I have a hundred percent success rate. I'll just say this to your listeners with asthma, a hundred, a hundred percent. Wow. Measuring self-reported by them, whether they can breathe easier and measuring it with these devices of, can okay. I blow more air? I can't advertise that yet. I don't want to, cause I only have 12 people. I need 25 to 30 in the study to make sure the statistics are defendable. Mm -hmm. Right. So in, in terms of, I pick every time I get to talk to a doctor, which right before this call, I was on one with one is like, I get to pick on because they're the only science that does statistics backwards. So everyone else in the real world would go, there's a 98% probability of this happening with a 90% confidence level. Okay. Doctors use the backwards one. They use P factors that instead of 95%, they say there's a P factor of 0 0.05, which means there's only a 5% chance that the improvement that you're seeing was due to chance. Why do they do that? I don't know. So <laughs> all the studies, if you have a P factor below 0 0.05, then they can say it's significant and statistical. And with my PTSD, I'm at five zeros and a seven, I think right now, zero, 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 seven. So I can argue that one. I can't do it with asthma yet. Can't do it with blood sugar yet, but we're going to hopefully be able to shortly. Okay. Okay, great. Well, now is a good time. We're just going to go to a quick um, break. But when we come back, we're going to talk more about the ailments that your device can help with. So okay. stick around and stay with us.
Golden Duffy, host of The Golden Hour on E360 TV on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 noon Pacific. I'm going to teach you all about universal law and creating the reality that you love on Achieve TV right here on E360 TV. Come check me out. And we're back with Mark Fox. Um, I want this in this segment just to talk about the ailments that your device can help with. And I know I have a list of and there's 55 protocols on it. And I just want to um, read off some of them. <clears throat> and oh, there's a few that I would really like to discuss. But okay. some of them are, are to help you with weight loss, to stop smoking, anti-aging, inflammation, hangover. That's a good one. Um, it can help with lower back pain, migraines, and can assist healing wounds. So I just wanted to, to um, you know, read out some of those for the viewers who don't have access to the protocols at the minute. But there are there are five on there that I want to talk about: um, PTSD, asthma, diabetes, sleep, and multiple sclerosis. And I know you've got a little bit of a story to talk about that one. So could you could we start with PTSD? Sure. I mean, we were before the break. We were talking about PTSD. That that's the number one thing that I did target. It has the five the huge P factor. So there's a 93 percent success rate with PTSD. Two out of three, meaning their scores came down. Two out of three are clinically and statistically significant, which means it moved more than 11 points. So that's all the good news. The bad news to that, um, if there is some, is about half of the people will tell me I'm not sure it helped. So there's a psychological factor there that I've talked to a lot of doctors and psychiatrists and they're telling me the same thing. That's true in every treatment. Yes. So a friend of mine who's a chiropractor, I've known since you know kindergarten, he's like, I videotape range of motion every time they come in because a month later they'll go, I could do this all, I always could do this. No, you couldn't, you couldn't even move your arm, right? So, um, so that's a weird thing. I had one lady that went from an 80 to a 17 and she goes, I'm not sure it helped. And then I showed her the report card. Yeah. So that's just her reporting before and after. And she started crying. She goes, Is it, where did the first number come from? You. I mean, I didn't. It was just an online survey. So PTSD, um, asthma, we already mentioned, diabetes or blood sugar. Sleep. Um, I used to tell people to put it under a pillow. Don't do that anymore. Sleep is 46 minutes protocol. So you just put it in your pocket an hour before you go to bed. It'll help you sleep, um, get to sleep faster, sleep longer. And that's self-reported. I've had multiple uh, customers get back to me that have aura rings that are recording that their sleep is better or they have a whoop, right? Or some kind of bio wearable that they're seeing the improvement. I tried to do something with the aura ring guys. They wanted way too much money. They're $400 and they wanted to give me like 7% off. I'm like, if I bought a thousand. <laughs> If I bought a thousand, they'd give me seven percent off four hundred. So, what I what I recommend is this is called a Inspire Three Fitbit. They're seventy nine dollars, so they're affordable. They measure heart rate variability, stress, and sleep factors. We'll go too deep into the PTSD, but what is very interesting is the main measurement that the Veterans Administration and researchers are using is heart rate variability. So. Whatever intervention or therapy it is, if the heart rate variability increases, that's good. So it's not like heartbeat or pulse. Heart rate variability, more of it is better, which isn't intuitive. It wasn't to me when I first researched it. So that's how they're measuring um, any of these interventions like EDMR, where you use your finger and other things like that. So um, so I encourage people, go you can prove it to yourself with biomarkers as well. Um, MS, so MS, multiple sclerosis, I do not have a protocol for, but I had three doctors in the same week 
two months ago that called me up and said, this thing's kicking butt for MS. It's, I've had patients that have not responded to anything. And now this is really helping them. Like, I don't have an MS protocol. I said, what are you using? Fibromyalgia? And they all three said yes. So again, I totally told you I'm not a doctor. Don't play one on TV. But I get an email now every single day, at least one that says, will it help with RSPT-C? And I'm like, I have no idea what that is. So I've learned the hard way. You do not go Google that without a cold <laughs> drink because you, you can't unsee some of these images. Oh. Never go to never go to the CDC sober. Don't ever type anything in. It'll freak. So I'm doing that now and I look for the underlying cause. And it's usually inflammation, uh, nerves, right? So inflammation run the general inflammation protocol. Mm -hmm. Nerves run fibromyalgia. Um, tendons, like tendonitis, just run that. Or a huge amount of them are, have something to do with immune system. So we have an immune support protocol. And I just tell people, go run that. I had a lady tell me every other week, it just hits me and I scratch. I can't stop scratching this, you know, till I bleed on my arms. And she goes, I don't know what it is. They don't know what it is. And I go, I don't know what it is. But I said, run general information. And it sounds like an allergy. So run allergy. And it went away and she never has had it again that I know of. Okay. So, so those kind of things, like the ones I just said, and allergies, so there's underlying ones that are, there might be on top of it, there might be a thousand diseases with different bad four letter acronym names for them, but they're mm -hmm. caused by immune support or heart health or, you know, the fire, you know, tendons or nerve issues. So mm -hmm. the other one that you want to talk about pain, pain. Um, we have one for both back pain and neck pain. When you get to the pain protocol, most of the protocols, you just hit it, put it in your pocket, you know, for, mm -hmm. for pain, arthritis, back pain, neck pain, it is better to try to get it as close as you can to where it's at. So back pain, I'm sitting there talking to you. I'm just going to slide it in my underwear right there <laughs> as I'm in the chair, right? So, or back pain, all women, almost all women, right? Have carry their cell phones in their back pocket, right? So mm -hmm. just, just in your other back pocket for back pain or anything else. Um, I don't know if you mentioned it, you didn't mention it, I don't think, but what I was going to bring out, because it has a lot of credibility is ADHD protocol. Yes. There's mm -hmm. a guy named Dr. David Burke at Cleveland Clinic. So you have some credibility. He's using the exact same protocol. Um, for, and he has about a 75% success rate with ADHD. He has a two-year waiting list for kids, right? right? So, and what he's doing, he's putting the electric, that one has electrodes, the machine is using and he's putting it in a bathtub and putting the kid in the bathtub. Well, the water's going to get cold after an hour and a yeah. half. So he stacks three machines to knock it down to like 40 minutes, and, but they still got to get in the bathtub, get wet. So he's testing this now. Is that way better for ADHD? It's a little bit of a challenge. He's don't want a stigma with a kid. So if you can put it in his pocket, put it next to his pillow when he goes to sleep or put it in his bed or something like that. And that's what I'm encouraging people to go do. So, you mentioned weight loss, so I'll just, the one negative, because I get, I have several women angry at me because they didn't lose weight. The weight loss program is only going to work if your weight is due to insulin resistance. Okay. So about a third of the population has weight gain due to insulin resistance. I have a great TED talk that's on my website of a doctor that was doing amputations all the time, and he made an argument. Everyone believes that you eat too much right? You gain weight and then it causes insulin resistance. He goes, what if it's the other way around? What if you have insulin resistance and that force that causes you to gain weight? So that's why I created, to, to be honest, the weight loss protocol is the insulin resistance one. Okay. Right? They're identical. And so two out of three women tell me it didn't help them at all. Okay. Well, you're not insulin resistant is my okay. theory. So that's how that one works. Makes sense. Okay. Um, and I'm just curious about migraines as well if you had any success with migraines because i have a i have a, a my eldest daughter she she suffers from from migraines and i know they can be very very debilitating for her i, I do there's a my, specific migraine protocol it works very well in two ways if you feel it coming on or your trigger or you know what it is run it and it can stop it from happening or if it gets into it the the, the severity will be a whole lot less and then if you do a maintenance program or you run it three to four times a week, you can get rid of migraines completely or it can minimize them. I have a 
17 year old girl that has not had a migraine since she started using it. And uh, she's as far as success story. She's one of my favorite stories by far is she told me, she goes, Mark, and people are doing this, right? Kind of like MS and using mm -hmm. fire mileage, they're doing stuff on their own, right? They look at it and they go, I'm going to try that. Yeah. She, goes, she goes, Mark, I have, I've never had a date in my life. No boy has ever asked me out because I'm a monster. I have Tourette's. She goes, I have bad Tourette's. I ran the brain balancing protocol. My Tourette's disappeared. And I have a date. I have a date on Saturday night. Oh, that's great. I was like, so she, I talked to her a couple of weeks ago. She hasn't had another Tourette's episode in a year now because she was using the old device I showed you earlier. But mm -hmm. I had no idea that, you know, brain balancing could help with Tourette's. Mm -hmm. The practitioners, what they do, if they not sure they're running some stuff, they're not sure what to use. They always kind of run brain balancing at the end, just because it's a gigantic mixture of, it helps a lot of things somehow. And they're not mm -hmm. sure how. So they also use it as a, a diagnostic tool that somebody comes in and presents, here's my symptoms. They go, okay, that must be immune support. So they run immune support and it doesn't help them. Then they go, I diagnosed it wrong. So they're, they're that confident and it working. It's like, okay, it didn't help you. We're, we're looking at the wrong thing. It's something else. So then they got to do the, the house and the Sherlock Holmes and start trying to troubleshoot and figure out what it is that's really causing the problem. Yeah. And I think with all healing frequencies, they can't do you any harm at all. So if you're, if, if maybe you're running a different frequency for what you feel your ailment is, it's definitely not going to do you any harm, is it? It can only help on maybe a deeper level. A couple things to that. In general, what you said is absolutely true. There's a couple exceptions. So one, the first time you use it, if you're in severe pain, do not be driving a car or operating a catapult or a spear gun or, right? I had a, a chiro, she was actually a physical therapist. She was over here in my house running the, actually the very first prototype I had for back pain. She was in a car accident and she's backpedaled and sat in that chair. And she goes, I feel drunk. I'm seeing double vision. So you can get drunk or stoned if you're in severe pain. And it's been measured why is the pain disappears quickly, rapidly, and the endorphins in your blood, like the runner's high, you get a ton of endorphins. So the joke is it's, you know, you get stoned or drunk and um, it's legal in all 50 states, right? So th that's the ones, the one quote side effect, be careful with it. Um, the other one is it can make you tired. So I wrote a blog post on that, that you're putting all this energy in your body and your body's trying to use that to, to heal yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's my analogy is eating a gigantic Chinese meal, right? You, you want to pass out because all your energy is going to your stomach, trying to digest all these carbs. Right. Yeah. So you can't get tired. Um, so that's why I tell people run the protocol. If it's going to make you tired, run it an hour before you go to bed or and to clarify the protocols, because I get asked all the time, how long do I run it? Well, however long the protocol says, because they're all different. So they would go from 30 minutes to two and a half hours, the average being about 45 minutes. So, um, so, so you can get tired from it. Um, I tell people in general, run it three to four times a week for 30 days. Um, if it doesn't help you in 30 days with that and you're hydrated, it's not going to work for you for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But almost every time it's, they didn't use it or they weren't hydrated, but I have addicts. I tell them, so I, to your point about, can it hurt them? I got people running this 12 hours a day. Hmm. They just, they run it for everything. My friend bought 15 of them. He's, he's an ex race car driver. He's been in, he's had four concussions and he's been on fire twice. So he was taking something like eight Ambien a night to sleep for 15 years. I've never had an Ambien. My, everyone I say that to that's taken an Ambien goes, are you kidding me? He's taking none now, mm -hmm. but he is addicted. He's got multiple devices. He's got one running arthritis, sleep, back pain, neck pain. You know. So I don't recommend you do it, but that I know of a third of my customers don't listen to me. And it's probably way more than that. <laughs> they just go, now I'm going to run however much I want to, right? It's like, mm -hmm. okay. I, I, another one just as example is like, this, he's one of my favorite new customers because he's called me uh, 22 times in the last wow. three weeks. In the last three weeks, 22 times. 
he's all worked up about prostate. And I told him the first time I talked to him, I don't have a prostate, try uh, general inflammation. So it's working for him, it's helping him, but he's not completely satisfied. So he's like, go build a prostate. I don't have that one. So uh, what I do have is brainwave entrainment. So there's five different brainwave entrainments. So I just did research, looked at uh, 30 years of research in Eastern Europe um, and found a study for prostate that was done at 25 Hertz. So I just looked at brain, I don't even remember which one it is, theta, brainwave theta, but you'd have to look at five, look at my chart. The one that's in the 25 Hertz range, uh, just go run that. So that's another reason I kind of did the brainwave entrainments is there's a million other things that, you know, like, like for example, getting in the zone, right? For sports, if you're a kid, soccer, basketball player, piano player as a kid, or you're, you're cramming for um, studying for f finals exams. in college. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Run, run theta and alpha and see if it helps with your focus. And that's, I learned this. I didn't know it. That's what athletes, NFL and NBA players have been doing for a long time. When they have their little headsets on, you think they're listening to music. A lot of them have some frequency stuff going on. That's in that, you know, you know that 25 Hertz range or the theta range. So. Sure. Yeah, I find I find listening to things like that very um, very therapeutic. But you touched just a minute ago on um, hydration. Is it important to be hydrated before you use it, and why would that be? So it's it's super important that you're hydrated. So the mag the a magnetic field drops off really fast. In scientific terms, it's called the square of the distance, and it's only eight to nine Gauss, which is not super small, but it's from this far away, the magnetic field, you're not going to feel. But we know if you have a broken foot and it's swelling and you put it there, nowhere near my foot, it still helps. So a couple things. One is, and we know that if you're not hydrated, it doesn't work as well. So what I mean by hydrated is four glasses of water in the four hours before you run the therapy. So a lot of times you can't do it first thing in the morning. It, you can, but it's not going to be as effective unless you pound four glasses of water. I kind of do. But so my theory is because it doesn't work as well when you're not hydrated, think of it like a pebble in a pond. So you throw a pebble in the water, the energy's at a point, energy's right here, mm -hmm. but like a wave, it's going to go out and transfer. So that's how I think it's getting through the body is resonating with the water in your body. And the second thing is your body's electrically conductive. Mm -hmm. so most people don't think of it that way because it's, there is high resistance, but your organs and your skin, everything in your body is electrically conductive. And if you remember from science class, if you have an alternating electrical field, it's going to create a magnetic field and vice versa. So this is an alternating magnetic field that's collapsing on itself. And it's going to create an electrical field, a small one. So I think it's also using electrical conductivity to travel through your body. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you about um, user friendliness, you know, and, and, and how, how does your device compare to the other frequency devices that are on the market? Because I know there's, there's a few of them and I have a couple myself and I find them fiddly. Um, but for somebody that is really not used to technology or even, you know, an iPod, for example, how easy is it for them to get used to, to the actual device and how it works? Um, as easy as I could make it. And I just I'm, press I, a button, like you said, and stick it in your pocket and off you go. Turn it on. I have to explain to people, if you want to do wound healing and you're inpatient, go backwards on the alphabet because they're in alphabetical order. But just go like that. Pick the one you want. Just press it. Play and mm -hmm. put it in your pocket. And it has a little timer that shows you how long. Now, there's beam, there's there's PMF mats that are huge and bulky. They're effective, but they come in six or seven pieces. They're around $5,000. Um, you can't take them on an airplane with you, right? They don't travel very well. Mm -hmm. And they're not discreet. You know, you got to be at home to lay on or something. This you can take anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. I call it at-home therapy, but you can be driving the car. You can sit on the airplane. And I've tested this expecting TSA at the airport to stop me. So I just put, I make sure it's running. I put it next to my phone in the plastic bin. I've never been, nobody's even asked me what it is yet. I was waiting for it to come up and I was going to lie to him and go, it's a music player. Cause that's kind of what it looks like, but I've, it does. I've never been asked that yet. So it, <laughs> there's other devices that are um, 
I'm going to say competitors, but they're not because I've talked to both of these CEOs. So Hap B and, um, and uh, Omni PMF, they're similar devices. They don't have the specific recipes and protocols. They have general stuff, kind of like I said, brainwave and train or things for sleep that are just mm-hmm. using multiple frequency. Theirs are um, interesting because there's Fisher Wallace is probably the most popular one been around the longest, but you got to put wet sponges on your head. Right. And it looks like the green mile, like you're getting electrocuted in the electric chair. So I hated that device. The happy was one you put on your head. And so was the Omni PMF and from customer feedback, customers don't like that. So they start putting it on their shoulder or they wear it as a necklace because they don't want it on their head. They're going on the assumption or they did that. It's got to be, if it's a head thing, I got to be near your head. But what I'm getting is PTSD. It's getting all the head and the whole body by just putting it in your pocket. Um, and their, their devices, I mean, they're getting tons and tons of feedback. Uh, they have a really low return rate as well. Knock on wood, mine won't last that long, but I have, to say whether it works or not, I have way less than 1% return rate. That okay. won't last forever, but that's give me a huge indication that it's it's working for people. Mm-hmm. Okay. And is it is it water resistant and how how long does the how long can you use it on one charge? So two different women, I got it wet and they asked me, I said, you dropped it in the toilet, didn't you? So oh. so I had to run the toilet test because I had never done it. So I threw it in the toilet and pulled it back out. <laughs> and on the last version, the coils right here where the wavy little lines are, those holes are there for two reasons for ventilation to keep it cool. Okay. And if you drop it in the water hit it with a blow dryer and that can, like if you drop your phone in the, most phones now are water resistant to six feet or 10 feet or something. But if you got water in them, you can't get it out very easy because it's sealed tight. This one hit it with a blow dryer as long as it's not in the water long. So it's not water resistant. It's not waterproof, it. but it's maybe water resistant. Just no, it's immediately. Neither. No, it's neither. If you drop mm-hmm. that in the water, it's going to go right through the holes and it's going to get wet. So it's not okay. water resistant or waterproof. Okay. Don't throw it in the water. But if it so falls we need to in the be water, careful with it. You got to be careful with it. I mean, if you spill. Yeah, it, it's designed that way because, like I just said, you got to have ventilation and holes and okay. stuff. So, what was the second part of the question? I, I forgot. Uh, oh, the length of, the length of um, time the battery will last. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, how many hours of use? The battery is going to last between four and five hours at full power. Okay. It'll it'll last eight to ten hours at fifty percent power. Most people are going to run it. Ninety eight percent of the people will run it at full power and should. It's only people that are energy sensitive. If it's tingling your fingers, most people won't feel anything. But if your f- fingers tingle a little bit. Um, if it makes you super tired, turn it down a couple notches. And here's the correlation. If you're, I don't know the right way ever to describe this, but if you see colors around people or auras, if you're that kind of person, it's probably, you're going to be a little sensitive to it. Turn it down a couple notches. Huh. And, and then the battery will last twice as long at seven as it will at 10. The trade-off with it, people go, I want a 20 hour battery. Well, okay. It's going to look like a football, right? So I had to do all this trade-off of how much energy if I doubled the output, the battery's got to be twice as big for the same, right? So to make, and of course I started off with the lanyard around your neck mm-hmm. as the primary way to use it. It only weighs 2.4 ounces, so it's super light, but that's still a little annoying for a few people after 45 minutes. So that's why I suggest putting it in your pocket, but I had to make it really light for that reason. Um, so that, cause it was going to go on a lanyard, but so yeah. Well, that's even it. four and five hours, that's a lot more than some devices will give you. I think I've got one that I, I'm lucky to get two hours out of, and it's pretty glitchy. But um, talk to us just quickly um, about contraindications for using the device. Okay, contraindications. So this is not just my device. This is the whole PEMF okay. industry. is, And it's always just airing on the side of caution. So there aren't any cases where anything bad has happened. But if you have a pacemaker or insulin pump, something that has electronics in it, don't use it. Okay. Now, I have to say that because that's what everyone's doing. Side of caution, same as pregnancy. There's no indication it has any problem with pregnancy, but don't use it. I don't want something, a birth defect to happen. And I don't want, what was it? 
You want to err on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. Err on the side of caution. I was just going to, Jenny McCarthy is what I was thinking. It was like, uh, <laughs> this, this caused ADHD in my kid. You don't have cause and effect, but anyway. So err on the side of caution there. Don't use it. Now, when I say that, MRIs are 50,000 Gauss. This is eight, nine. Mm -hmm. wow. And now it used to be you could never get an MRI if you had a pacemaker. That's not true anymore because doctors have figured out they need an MRI. They have a pacemaker, but let, so they're putting them MRIs and they got a clinician standing there to make sure nothing bad happens, right? So there's that. So if it's electronic, don't use it. Now, if you have a hip replacement, any metal parts, screws, hip replacement, knee replacement, it's fine for all that. It's just the electronics because it's putting out a magnetic field could screw up. And I've tried to do stuff, right? I've I've ran this thing, putting it near all kinds of electrical things, see if I can make it screw up it. I haven't yet. So, okay. but err on the side of caution there. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, okay, we're getting close to running out of time. So uh, I know that you have uh, an offer for the viewers. I'm going to pop up your details here if you want to tell us about it. Okay, yeah. So that, that webpage right there, Rizona.health, Rizona stands for resonance, that forward slash transcend is a specific landing page, that QR code for your listeners. Uh, the device is normally $399. It's $150 off on that landing page. So it, they get it for $249. They should be able to just hit the order button. I think I have that coupon code working correctly that it'll, when you go to the shopping cart, it's going to say coupon code successfully applied. So you don't even have to enter the coupon code, but if it doesn't work, the transcend, the coupon is transcend 150. Mm -hmm. So they can type it in if they have to, but that, they shouldn't have to go do that. And if you're on the fence and you should be, um, I'm skeptical. I'm a rocket scientist is usually I'm 15, 20 minutes in their conversation with a customer. It's like, you know what? Just try it for 30 days. If it doesn't work, I'll give you your money back, send it back. Cause I don't want a single device anywhere in the world that somebody paid for and it's not helping them send it back to me. Cause I don't, I don't need any Facebook haters. I got enough of them without yeah. <laughs> I've been called Hitler. One guy gave me his address said, please come to my house so I can kill you. I'm oh like, goodness. Do, I go, how did that even get through Facebook? It didn't get filtered, but so yeah, it's a, you just try it. If it doesn't work for you three to four times a week, 30 days, if it doesn't work for you, it's not gonna. However, almost every time somebody has called me, it's not very often. They call me and say, I don't, it's not working for me. Are you, you one of two things you didn't use it or you're not hydrated? It's always those two. Well, I tried it once. Okay. You've had severe back pain for 30 years. You tried it once and you put it back on the shelf. Yep. Okay. Do you drink water? My favorite story of all is the guy's like, yeah, I'm hydrated. And by the way, elderly people are chronically dehydrated. Okay. So this guy told me I'm hydrated. Don't, I, I don't want to have this conversation anymore. You already brought it up three times. I said, I asked you three times how much water you drink a day. And he goes, I don't drink any water. So <laughs> how are you hydrated there? Kreskin. And he's like, uh, I had a protein drink last week. Last week. That's what he told me. I had a protein oh drink last week. I'm like, okay. So drink four glasses of water before you do the therapy, go do it for another couple of weeks. His 30 days were up, right? You know, mm -hmm. go do it for a couple or, and he called me back, said, I don't want to admit it, Mark, but now I feel way better. Now they start drinking water. I had another guy tell me I use it for 30 days and it didn't work for me. I'm sending it back. I'm like, uh, I shipped it to you eight days ago. So you've had it for th four days, five days. You haven't used it for 30 days. And he goes, oh, okay. So he, he's still in test <laughs> mode out there. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we're, we're, we're running out of time, but I wanted to ask you a question before we leave. Okay. Um, your resume is amazing. You have got loads and loads of different job titles on there. And one of them that caught my eye was that you were the um, the chief space shuttle engineer at NASA. Just in, in 30, 45 seconds, just give us a few seconds, just what it was like working at NASA. Yeah, I, I was the chief engineer on the solid rocket boosters for Morton Thaikal, who is the company that built them. Um, I was one of those chief engineers. It's just, I, I didn't ever want to get into rockets, but nobody was hiring anyone in 1983. I was hanging drywall. So then I got offered a job and I took it and it's like, I won't be there but six months. I was there about 17 years. I loved it. The problem was NASA is just way too conservative to make changes and do anything. And so... It's super fun to watch the launch, but when you want to improve something, it was just too frustrating. There's one thing where I, 
I'm lucky. We lucky we didn't kill any technicians, but it was something I wanted to change. I had the solution, but they would never let me implement it because it was a change. So I got real quick. I got offered a huge promotion. That's why I left because I was afraid if I took that, I'd be stuck there my entire career. So that's why I left the rocket world. There you go. No longer a rocket scientist. <laughs> hey, I feel like one doing this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Well, thank you for um, having me. I had a great conversation. You're so welcome. And thank you so much for our viewers also. Um, left the information on the screen. Go ahead um, uh, and check it out yourself. But we will see you next week. Thank you well, now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey,